Hey guys, welcome back to the radio shop. I'm going to be doing some multi part videos on the uh, two bon Johnson Viking 2s I picked up, and I'll be uh, you know switching up between the two units and trying to get them back to their original condition. Now, this particular one here is. Let's just say mods gone wild. Uh, somebody really had a a blast inside of this thing, and I don't even think they used to right kind of solder to even uh, put this thing together with. So uh, sit back, enjoy. You know, I'll be working on these as I can, a little bit here at a time. So I'll be putting a lot of footage together as I go along. You know, I've got uh, other customer stuff to uh, be repaired and you know and then there's work so we'll you know over the next several months we'll be doing several videos on these two Johnsons and see if we you know can make them uh, great again like they used to be uh, these Johnson Viking 2's are some of the best AM transmitters that was ever built as long as uh, you know, people didn't go in and, and screwdriver them and just, uh, man, this one's, it's, it's horrible. You'll see when we get into the videos. And, uh, like I say, I'll be putting the other one in, so I'll be bouncing back and forth between these two. Uh, you know, as we tear stuff apart, we'll find stuff that we'll need to order. So, you know, it could be days, weeks or so before those orders come in, so... We'll do what we can. So, again, sit back, enjoy, and uh, we'll go through them. So, the uh, <laughs> the funny thing about this transmitter is it does work. Uh, I wouldn't trust running it long with uh, all these old capacitors in it. But the thing does put out 120 watts, and it does have modulation. Uh, and I look at it, and I go, wow, how? You know, one of the first things that we saw when we first looked at this unit was the uh, way they had set the modulator current. And <laughs> that's what they've done. You know, they've put in some fixed value resistors. And they said some kind of hocus pocus here. And uh, to get the modulator current set, I have the uh, original resistors already here I ordered some from Allied so we'll get those uh, changed out and when I look down here in this modulation uh, circuit see our interstage transformer and you know just looking at it it doesn't look too bad but when you start looking around here you see all this copper wiring that's down here and you wonder what in the world is going on you know what have they done uh, normally there's shielded cable going up to the uh, mic connector but it's just plain wiring running up there and you see two shielded cables here so we got to, we're gonna have to just strip all this out and rebuild this area So we get here and we notice that the uh, this looks like you know possibly one of the original filter caps, but the other dual cap has been replaced by these two caps. Now in another video I told you that uh, this wire that's feeding the plate of the RF choke, you can see it's got a, a bare spot right here on it, and it goes up in the uh, resistor under the choke is burnt up but it looks like somebody had a, uh, a failure sometime in the past cause all this wiring here is completely bare even this wire going down to this uh, big oil can cap all the insulation is burnt off in it so we're gonna have to strip all this out and replace it these two ground runners 
they usually have little loops of wire on the ground that comes up there's two of them there all the insulation is blown off of them so it to be you know to this to happen on the ground side must have been a major um, issue going on because it has burnt all this wiring up so we've got to get all that replaced when we look here under the uh, final amplifier tubes we see our RF choke here and this normally just comes down and there's usually a bar kind of like this uh, going from one tube to the other and this is connected directly to it along with this cap here but somebody has come in here and put some suppressors under the bottom of it which is not a bad idea to do but this one is only an inch long and this one's two and a half inches long and my understanding that whenever you're balancing out a circuit that the feed point should be equal when that's not even close that's like a three to one so we're going to have to go in there and change that put it back uh, stock and do away with this uh, funny business they got going on and then there's just so many other things in here uh, I mean, just looking at the solder connections, I mean, some of them are just terrible. So we're going to have to clean all this stuff up. And you see it everywhere. You can see here where it feeds the uh, 807s with these 100 ohm resistors that these connections here are just terrible. It looks like they used a... Uh, big diameter solder with no heat hardly it's just it's it's really bad looking so whenever you got to go through anything that has been uh, cobbled up like this you just best to pick an area start there walk your way down and in this unit that's exactly what we'll do we'll start up here by the power supply We'll work our way down and across and then back up the other side. And we can verify it with the schematic and the uh, layout that's in the manual. And to see if we can get this thing back together like it should be. And so by starting, you know, here around the uh, power supply section, you know, we'll get these old caps out, get them replaced. And as we look around in here, we'll just see lots of uh, mistakes. Now, most of these is kit built. I don't see a stamp in this one, so I'm sure this is kit built. And I think a lot of the issues that are in this rig uh, basically come from the original builder. But, yeah, there's just so many things in here that catch my attention. Look down in here. You can see that there's frayed wires on a lot of these connections. Over around here you can see how burnt up this connection is, this black wire, the insulation burn off of it, and it's almost touching this other terminal that's right beside it. This ground runner that's going to this coil here is uh, right next up to the ground. There's been a capacitor here clipped and resoldered. A lot of charring, some burnt wires down here around the bottom that we'll have to fix all that. Then you can see that uh, connection there where a wire was just added on. And this goes, feeds the B plus to the bottom of the uh, RF choke. And that's just hanging out like that. That is very poor practice. And then at the bottom of these capacitors, every wire here has been burnt up. So we're going to have to get in here and replace all of this stuff and get it back like it's supposed to be. So with that, uh, 
what I'll probably do now is just go ahead and get these capacitors out get them out of the way and then start looking at the uh, problems around it there's just no need of even trying to save capacitors like this they're no good just go ahead and uh, clip them out of the way they're completely good for nothing see what they had in there that's a 8 microfarad cap that's a 20 microfarad cap and both of them are in the uh, negative supply look that one just pulled right off the bottom of the capacitor. I can't even get to the uh, ground lug. Get my bigger part uh, cutters and cut that band. And we're looking at the base of this tube. These are the two uh, negative capacitor leads and you can see how they'll just uh, run around and all the uh, frayed wiring sticking off of this stuff you know it's, it's, it's stuff like this that will cause major problems if you don't go ahead and take care of it now especially with arcing and I mean just very poor wiring on this over next to it you can see uh, all the insulation is burnt off in this. It's right up against this solder terminal here. The burnt wiring that's down in here. This one has to be replaced. You can see how they just burnt the wiring. Not pay in mind where the solder iron's at. So I got to strip all that out and get it uh, fixed up. Okay, guys. Uh, Got all this area cleaned up, all the solder joints redone. The only thing I haven't done was replace this black wire going to the fuse because uh, the last half inch of it is bare and it's been heated up here. Got all the burnt wires over here out, all but this one that's going to the uh, RF choke. I'm just going to run a new wire to it. Got my two. Uh, high voltage caps here on the terminal strip it's going right straight to ground these are the uh, negative supply caps and you see much smaller they're 15 at 160 volts the original was 15 at 150 volts so that really saves a lot of space here I got them wired into the bottom of the tube by these little leads and now I'm going to uh, jump down and Work on this mess below here. All these fried wires in here. I mean, they just look terrible. This is how the uh, capacitor leads were connected. And you see, I have not desoldered this in. That's exactly how it was. Also, the uh, one wire going to the fuse holder was not even soldered. It was just uh, put in the tab and crimped over like it never had solder on it so this is fun I went ahead and dropped the uh, coax chassis connector off the back and dropped it down the side because I want you to get a better look at just what's going on in here you can see all these leads are just fried and touching each other Everything here is just blown up. These are the little ground loops that Johnson installed and they are fried and you see this lead that goes to the capacitor. No uh, insulation left on it. So I'm going to have to go ahead and get all this stripped out and cleaned up and hope that this uh, terminal can be saved. If not, I'll have to replace it. Well, luckily here that's some extra wire. I had to cut the uh, string 
wrap off of this and pull these wires out and then went back with a tie wrap and you can see just how burn up the ends of these wires are but the rest of it looks okay so now I can go ahead and get these uh, terminal strip cleaned up and get these soldered back down and we should be alright on this set of wires then we have to move on over to the other side and see can't we get it cleaned up and it looks like the terminal strip is okay I don't see any burnt or carbon tracks or anything across it so once these things get a carbon track across it they will arc and keep arcing so they have to be replaced but this one looks okay well guys more trouble for the radio shop <laughs> as I was in here replacing these wires and tidy them up I got down here to the uh, rectifier tube and pin 2 here happens to be the smoking gun that caused all the damage in this area and it looks like uh, probably had a bad ground and the so pin 2 goes to ground on this 5R4 rectifier and you can see how loose pin 2 terminal is and the way I found that was there was two wires with as you can see all the insulation was burnt off of them so I was going to clip them back and start replacing them and then I noticed that this uh, pin was loose but there's actually a crack right through the ceramic where this rivet sits and it continues on over to this side which uh, luckily that pin is not loose but there's a crack there too so this two socket is definitely crapped completely in half so I got to check my junk box and see if I got a ceramic tube socket if not I'm going to have to uh, put in an order see if I can locate one of these I would like to go back with something very uh, similar to what's in there so yep more fun work to do so there's the uh, broken tube socket you can see pin 1 it's just uh, completely out of the socket. It's cracked all the way across. And so this is what generated all that heat and burned up all the wiring and so forth onto that area. Now I did not have a ceramic tube socket of this style in stock. So I'm going to get online and order a couple of them. But I didn't want to also stop and wait to get this uh, together so I can test it so I just uh, cut a piece of square plate metal took the uh, hole punch punched out a hole in the center of it and put in one of those lock ring style uh, sockets for time being and just bolted it back in the original holes where the socket was just so I can get everything wired up and get all the leads dressed out like I want them then when the new socket comes in I mean there's only uh, five terminals used on this socket so it can be uh, changed out pretty quickly but we got everything in this area back together I still got to tackle the uh, B plus wire but that goes up on the top side so I think I'm gonna go ahead and get to that now and see what I find then I'll come on down here and start sweeping through the uh, audio circuit get all this stuff and then up to the uh, modulator current circuit and see if I can get that taken care of this took about an hour and a half to just do this section over here that wiring was really in bad shape but we got it looking better now I got the oil choke out and We can see that that resistor is uh, about had all it wanted. So I'm going to look in the schematic and find out what that is because can't see it on the resistor anymore. And go ahead and get that replaced. Up on the top of the coil, this last winding is loose. So the only thing we're going to do is lay it back where it's supposed to be. Put a couple of drops of uh, 
pour one lot tight on it and get it to lay back down like it's supposed to be. Shouldn't be too bad to do. And you see here's the wire that was originally going to it that had had several hot spots in it. So we'll have to get that uh, replaced and run a new piece of wire. Okay I got the uh, high voltage wire. Instead of going in here and tearing out all this wiring to replace this whole string, I put a ceramic insulator here and just tied the two points together. I mean to me that looks better than uh, putting a piece of heat shrink tubing in and running it on. The uh, little small RF choke that was under the uh, bigger RF choke you can see it's, uh, <laughs> it's completely burnt in two it even has a big long crack in it it come apart when I was moving it. I'm looking at now uh, starting to clean up this area here because we've walked all the way up here and then we're coming across so I'm going to start uh, verifying on the schematic if these are the right capacitors and uh, I'll go ahead and start replacing those. There's a lot of solder joints and wiring in here to clean up also. Uh, I noticed that this one wire on the uh, interstage transformer has big long part stripped off of it here. So I have to add some wiring to that and get it looking like it's supposed to because I just don't like uh, all this bare wire showing. And if I can get a better angle so you can see this mess that's up in here. So there's a big old large cap here that's been installed. That's not supposed to be an electrolytic. It's supposed to be a non-polarized cap going from the control to uh, I think V1. They put a large electrolytic. Then this big beefy ground wire. I don't know what they're thinking here. I have some of this original small shielded cable I'll replace it back with. But this is going to be quite a bit of a challenge to get all this uh, cleaned up and out of there. So you know I'm looking through this section just to find out just what they was trying to do with all this big shielding and stuff that they put in here and you know, I've said it many times before that if you look over a piece of electronic equipment, it will just about tell you its history. Alright, well again, I'm amazed at how this circuit even worked. Um, cause I really don't know how it worked, the way it's wired. I got the interstage transformer moved out of the way and you see this cap is an electrolytic. This cap is an electrolytic. They're both 8 microfarads at 450 volts. Down here is a 10 microfarad. That one's supposed to be there. I don't know what this one is yet, but it's also electrolytic. When you look at the schematic diagram of the Johnson Biking 2, there's only two electrolytics in this circuit uh, C54 and C1 and it's kind of reason they put four electrolytics in this circuit so again strip it all out got the schematic rebuild it back the way it's supposed to be and that's just some cobbled up mess in here this wire here has got multiple uh, shields coming from it. There's a big long bare wire coming from this other blue electrolytic under here that just runs everywhere completely bare. No idea what they were doing here, what kind of mod that's supposed to be. I think now you can get a better idea of what I'm seeing here. I mean, wow, what in the world has somebody done here? You see this is the wire that goes to the mic jack and it's going directly down here to the bottom of V1 and you got this big 
ground strap with a wire in the center of it and then you got another small grounded wire coming off and it going to this terminal and then it snakes on down here and goes to the uh, audio gain pot and then does that big electrolytic that's got bare wires man it is just uh, unbelievable I have no idea what they've done here well guys this is where we at at the moment you can see I have completely stripped everything out of the audio section including the tubes and you know I'm not against mods mods can be good there's uh, no problems at all with doing mods if it's done right but this mess was so cobbled in that it was just completely terrible now if you notice the one hole is uh you know there's supposed to be a couple of six au sixes in here but you see this hole is bigger has been drilled out and a couple of new mounting holes put in well that's because the uh the two tubes have been changed over to different type of tubes and i've seen a lot of these mods on the internet but i haven't seen this one in this configuration before uh, V1 they had a 12AX7 I've seen that in V1 place that's why the uh, hole is bigger than normal and in V2 have a 6AQ5A in, uh, in V2 spot and the reason why I removed that tube socket is the uh, pins were in such bad shape and pin 5 is actually broken off. There's only just a little stub that they had soldered on a resistor to. So that's got to be changed. Um, no, I do not have any of these uh, ceramic sockets like this so I'm gonna have to sit here and think about how I want to uh, rebuild this audio section um, I don't think that the enlarged hole here will be a problem if I want to go back original but uh, I know one of the mods that I've seen use a uh, 12AX7 and a 6C4 and in V2 spot and the 6C4 uses the same socket so since so I already got a socket for this one I may go back and modify it that way but anyway I've got to order up a, uh, a new socket to go here because since the other one's broken it's <laughs> it, it was just a shame if this would have been done by a professional it would have been perfectly fine I would have no problem with it because there's a lot of gain in uh that combination you know to drive those 807 modulators uh, it'll really run the uh, screen voltage right on up but yeah, it's it's doesn't look too good the way it is right now that's all the mess that came out of just the uh, the audio section alone and I, I couldn't figure out why there was four electrolytic capacitors in there. Now I see why. And uh, yeah, it's just a mess. And then there's the uh, four tubes that came out. So uh, yeah, we had a lot of a lot of junk in here, so forth. You know the way it's going. All the screws over here. So let me think about what I do. Um, get some parts ordered I'll probably just go ahead and order some new sockets anyway because uh, it's good to have them in stock and I have some regular seven pin sockets but uh, I don't have these nice ceramic ones and that's what I'd rather put back in it is the good ceramic I had to order the uh, socket for the uh, regulator tube anyway so I'll just add some more to my list and like I say, I've already got the uh, resistor available. 
slider resistor here. I got a couple of those in stock, all ready to go in there. So uh, a lot of work to do to this thing. That's why I'm saying that the uh, the one that's got all the painted up front is uh, electrically in better shape than what this one was. This one's cos cosmetically better, but the uh, the other one is electrically better. And I've also had to strip out the uh, audio stage in it because it was just all cobbled together and it just isn't built the way it should be. Like I say, I've already got a lot of footage on the uh, painted one going through the restoration on it, so I might try to put it together, get it edited, and I probably can make two videos out of that one already um, that I got done. So, yeah, a lot of work to do. When you go and you get a hold of uh, these old boat anchors, you never know what you're going to find inside. And uh, this one here just really, uh, <laughs> it's it's really been cobbled together. Uh, this solder that they used here, I don't know what this stuff is, but it is just hard and brittle. When you heat it, it doesn't melt. It just kind of clumps up. Um, it looks like, almost looks like plumber's soda. And, uh, it's just terrible. Well, once I got over the uh, initial shock <laughs> of this cobbled up mess in the uh, audio circuit of this Johnson Viking 2, it dawned on me what someone had did. It was just put in so poorly that it, what I was seeing just did not make sense with all the uh, grounding wires and jumpers and everything going everywhere. But I went back online and I downloaded one of the uh, audio mods. And you know, one of the first giveaways I said there was four electrolytic capacitors in the circuit, two of them being eight microfarad and two 10 microfarads. Now the normal circuit has 210 microfarad caps and looking at this you can see in this circuit here this is audio conversion for Johnson Viking 1 and 2 transmitters and it was on the uh, AM press exchange during uh, October of 1981 so as you can see there's a 12 AX7 and a 6 C4 the only difference in this mod and the mod that I had, instead of having the 6C4, we had a 6AQ5 as the uh, second tube. Now this circuit is a triple stage audio amplifier. It uses uh, one half of the 12AX7, which drives the second half of the 12AX7 which then drives the 6C4, or in this case, the 6AQ5, and then out to the uh, interstage transformer. And it's a good mod. It it it, uh, it adds a lot of punch to your audio. The only thing is, is that you really need a bigger interstage transformer to, uh, to work with this so it works correctly. And looking at what they have in the uh, Johnson Viking here is the original interstage transformer. So what I'm going to attempt to do is uh, go back and put this thing stock like it was originally and then get rid of this uh, cobbled up mess for the uh, modulator current that they had in here. So that's what I'm gonna do is go ahead and wire it back stock. Uh, I do have some uh, tube sockets that has the shield on them. They're not uh, ceramic, but they do hold the uh, cover that goes on them. So they'll be fine for this. Okay guys, through the magic of YouTube, the uh, audio stage is completely rebuilt. And I don't think this was done in one day. It's actually been a little over four weeks since the uh, 
last time I worked on this, but you know, work, work, work. What can you do? Anyway, that's done. The only thing that like this pops turned around backwards. The uh, leads or legs of the parts facing the wrong way, and I just don't feel like tearing the whole front down and turning it around. I will do that later. I just want to see if it got, you know, if everything is working like it's supposed to be. Now, whenever I work on something like this and do this much repair, I'll do a little bit, then I'll, once I get that circuit completed, I'll uh, stop and test it to make sure nothing else has happened. So uh, that's what I want to go ahead and do now and make sure our audio stage is working. Alright, I got my scope probe connected to the output of the uh, amplifier. So uh, if we get anything there, we know that the V1 preamp is working and then the final amplifier is working. So uh, we'll have a look over here at the scope. And we don't have to key it up, I'll just take the microphone. Test one, two, test one, two. Yep, and we do have some audio. So the, uh, the new stage is working. So the next thing we do is just look at the uh, input going to the uh, 807s. This is coming out of the uh, interstage transformer. And uh, as you can see, that is a working also. Okay, so so far uh, everything's working. I even checked that I've got a uh, modulation on the output. Only done it for a minute because I don't like something that I'm seeing. And that is when I go to the meter on oscillator, buffer, and grid, the meter's working. When I go to plate to dip the plate, the meter does not work. Also, when I go to modulation, there is nothing on the meter. Now, I looked at the schematic. I don't see a uh, any shunt resistors or anything in there. So, uh, I'm going to have to get in here and troubleshoot this meter circuit. Um, there is a couple of caps on the meter. I don't think that's the problem. But we'll need to get in here and find out what's going on with the meter. But we'll do that in the next video. And so in the next video, we'll uh, <clears throat> get the meter working in those two positions. And then we'll get in here and redo this uh, modulator current adjustment and put the correct resistors in. Then a few more solder joints to tidy up. And I think we'll be... Uh, I get a home run with this one. It uh, seems to be working pretty good. I'll switch back over to CW and uh, key the transmitter. And we can see about 120 watts on the meter. So uh, that's pretty good. I'll switch over to phone. Go to transmit. Test one, two, three, and we're pegging out the 200 scale, which just is peak. So uh, that's not, you know, the most accurate way to check, but yeah, it is working. So guys, there we have it. Another installment on the uh, Johnson Viking 2s. Uh, I say about four and a half, going on five weeks into this one and into the other one and just working on them you know in the spare time here and there so uh we'll see how uh how it goes in the future with it i think this one is now going to be uh be okay it uh it looks like it's it's heading in the right direction all right so we'll conclude part one of this and uh we'll see you in the next video have a good day now